So Millennium Actress, first of all, I was a fan of Kon Satoshi's films in general. Um, I was a huge fan of Paprika um, for many years, but now that I'm a little bit older, I feel like I'm more drawn to Millennium Actress. And I think it's one of those films that the older you get and the more you live your life and have life experience, the more you fall in love with this film. Um, just how passionate Chiyoko is and how you get to see her whole life story unravel and all the ups and downs and then to see her, that passion kind of persist through her life is, it's really, it's moving. It made me cry. Chiyoko is a passionate young actress who is determined to pursue her dream and to pursue love. So I love how independent Chiyoko is and how she doesn't let her life get dictated by her mother or society. She just kind of pursues her, her own dream and passion, regardless of what other people think. I think like I definitely do let my dreams dictate my life. <laughs> That's maybe why I moved to Japan initially, is because I wanted to travel and see the world, and then I moved to Tokyo to see what acting and music possibilities lay there, and then I moved back to the United States to pursue voiceover specifically, so I, I feel like I'm very dream-driven, <laughs> yeah. I think Chiyoko fell in love with the idea of the painter more than the painter himself. Um, to her, he represented all of the possibilities of love and possibilities for the future, and that dream kept her going. I think one of his lines, um, there's a scene where he's talking about the moon, and he talks about how he prefers the moon right before the full moon because you get to look forward to the full moon. And I think that kind of sums up Chiyoko's feelings about the painter. She's looking forward to it and she's in love with that. I think the key for Chiyoko kind of remains the same. Um, I think it symbolizes her love and passion. And so it's really the key to her heart. A little cheesy, but <laughs> I think it's true. So Chiyoko says something along the lines of she's in love with the pursuit and I think a lot of times we kind of get wrapped up in the end goal and achieving and we're not always happy with the result of achievement. We've oh, not always, we don't always find that like achievement or success yields happiness. So I think there's a lesson to be learned in finding happiness in the pursuit. Hmm, I think forgiveness is a subjective matter, but personally, I think if somebody feels remorse, then they're worthy of forgiveness, and it's sometimes just difficult to find that within yourself to forgive them, but yeah, I think that he showed remorse, so I would probably try to forgive him myself. I think that the witch is actually a reflection of Chiyoko herself. So if you remember in the film, near the end, there's an appearance of the witch and she kind of leans forward and you see a mole. Um, so I feel like the witch is kind of a reflection of herself. I think it's kind of the same, but character development might be different. For example, like if you're playing a role in a cartoon that's evolving over seasons, you have more time to develop a character and like create an, a character arc or, you know, maybe the writers have included different little tidbits for your character over time. Whereas like a feature, you have, you know, a couple hours to tell your character's story. So that's one difference about it, but I feel like preparation and, and thinking about approaching a character is kind of the same for me. It 
didn't really because I think that Chiyoko is kind of driven by the same thing. Even though she might lose it a little bit along the way at one point in her life, I think that that underlying love and, and youthful passion is what drives her. So I think my approach was kind of the same, especially knowing the, the end of the film. I usually try to think about the character's needs and wants, as most actors do, I suppose. Um, and then for voiceover, I like to come up with like a, a phrase or a line to try to get me into that character's mindset or voice, if it's like a voice that's very different from mine, so. Mm, I think Mel Brooks films. <laughs> So I used to watch Young Frankenstein over and over with my dad. Like there was a point in my life where I could probably recite that entire movie. <laughs> and I think that really kind of introduced me to like stupid humor and like the idea of humor and like puns and making jokes and being clever and clever and stupid. Um, just I love that sense of humor and the memories of spending time with my dad. So. That movie and The Fifth Element are two movies that I will, I can watch over and over again. I won't get sick of them. They're the only two I can think of. Yeah. The Fifth Element's just so weird. Like, it's so all over the place and I'm like, I'm endlessly interested in that movie. Carmen Dallas. Growing up, I think Meryl Streep is just one of those amazing actresses who, she's like flawless. Like everything she does feels so real that it's, it's mind blowing and I love her, she's great. Definitely, yeah, yeah. My parents have always been extremely supportive. I'm very lucky. Um, even when I was like, I wanna be a theater major, they were like, okay maybe think of a backup major, but cool, go do that. So they've always been there for me. By the seat of my pants, colon, a life.